What's going on guys? My name is Nebo and welcome back to Blackwatch Intel. In today's video, I want to be talking about insta locks, trolls, and throwers in the competitive scene. Before we jump into all that, I would like to tell you a story about my placement matches and the days after the placements trying to climb out of this elo hell that I'm in. Season 6 has started and uh, I've only won 3 times out of the 10 and the rest were all losses because of either insta locks, trolls, throwers, or someone has left. Resulting in my team to, you know, do bad and also, you know, up this toxicity and, uh, you know, resulting in basically a loss. Which kind of sucks because playing competitive, you think, you know, with that name competitive, everyone's gonna play competitively. But there is a, you know, a higher percentage in the lower elo hells that people feel like they need to troll and throw to have fun. And uh, with these kind of people, I think, you know, they should just, they really need to get out of... The competitive scene and jump back into quick play there is a lot of people that don't actually mean to throw they they play these certain characters that are not not helping the team as they would like but i mean you gotta understand if there is a person who likes to play attack torbjorn and also defensive torbjorn they're trying to do their best uh, i give it to them and that's fine you know that's that is onto the team to you know work together as as a team to win the match and you can't really blame one person if they're you know playing that character but i feel like you know if they're they are that character and they're doing some silly stuff and uh and no not actually helping the team then there is you know an actual chance of them being a troll and or thrower so with that uh the next two days after i have yet to win a match for two days straight i have lost and that is result yet again with insta locks trolls and throwers and the insta locks honestly they drive me nuts guys and i really want to get your opinions on this i come into a match i want to play a dps because i have yet to play a dps everybody has you know insta lock the dps nope we have four people on our team and they're dps fine i will be a tank and or a support and now the match has started and the DPS has not yet got a kill. So this person has insta-locked the DPS and have not got any kills, not doing their job proficiently like, you know, the rest of the people who play DPS would get, you know, a more proficient uh, kill streak or, you know, more kills in the actual match, suppressing the opposing team. And this drives me nuts, guys, because if you are not a DPS main, you should not play DPS. I mean, if you are a flex player, go ahead, but... If you're not doing good on that role, please switch off. That's basically my thoughts on that right now. Talking about the throwers and the trolls, I feel like there's a higher percentage of trolls, throwers, and leavers from the plats all the way down to bronze rank. And uh, it's, it honestly blows my mind because last season I was at 3870. That is master, almost grandmaster. And when I played in that, it felt amazing. Every match was down to the wire. It was so sweaty, and it felt great to play competitive. Now, when you get into lower plats, nobody really talks, and nobody really sticks to their main role. Now, going back to Masters, Grandmasters, and the Top 500s, Everybody knows what their role is. They stick to their role. If they're a support hero, they play supports. If they're a DPS main, they play DPS and on and on and on. And there's a lot of communication and everybody wants to get together to win and push their SR up. And I really understand where this mindset comes from when you're at this lower ELO hell. It could be, you know, people trying to push their way up out of the ELO hell and they've had enough. They're fed up of their rank and, you know, they result into trolling, throwing and or insta-locking their, you know, hero that they want to play. And I feel like if the community actually plays together to, you know, get that common goal in competitive to win, I think there will reduce an actual percentage of these trolls and throwers. I feel like they need to do something with competitive in order to reduce the percentage of the trolls and or throwers and also insta locks in this game. So with everything that I just said, I did some thinking about why this is happening in season six more than ever and especially in season five. And uh, in my opinion, I think it's two things. The first reason is because the golden weapon. So the golden weapon rewards at the end of the season are already set. So if you get into, you know, master, you instantly get 3000 competitive points. 
and uh, the same thing goes with the rest of the tiers going down. You significantly get lower amounts of uh, competitive points, but if you have played enough and won enough, you can get your golden weapon. And I feel like people just play it just to, you know, get the golden gun. They don't feel like they need to win. They just need to get to that certain SR, that certain tier in order to get their points to finish off the, the rest of the season to get the golden gun. And that's the first reason for me that I feel like people, uh, you know, you know, insta log don't really care that much. That, I mean, it could be, you know, here or there. That's just my opinion on that one. It could be the golden gun. I feel like maybe if there's harder rewards to get, maybe people will try a little bit better. And my second thinking of why people throw and, uh, and troll is because it's season six. The game has been out for a year and, you know, I'm not saying the game is boring, but I feel like people know they can get away with certain things and, uh, you know, try to push it to the next level with, you know, their trolling and throwing and, uh, you know, insta-locking just to try to see what will happen in com the competitive scene. Now, if you take a look back to season one, you know how sweaty that was? It was so hard to get up the through the ranks, even to the season two and three, everybody was trying to get up as high as they could. And that's where my, my whole logic of this comes into. You have six seasons of competitive and it's honestly constantly changing and you know growing and they're always evolving it and people just try to push that um boundaries to see how far they can get out of this before they get reported or or deleted off so you know that's why we have an influx of trolls and throwers in my opinion anyways i do have uh, some ideas and thoughts that blizzard can implement into the game and it could work potentially down the line so this first idea I had was going into competitive, you can pick your role that you want to play and a set character that you are really good with. So say you are DPS main and you want to play Soldier 76 and now it will take what you have added into the competitive uh, information and try to put you into a game filling that slot for everybody else. Now everybody else that's going to be searching will be doing the same thing, putting their information in. I'm a Zinyo Zenyatta main, so I will be filling in the Zenyatta healer slot and uh, on and on and on for the rest of the team to be filled out so it can be complete competitive uh, team and the comp will be even throughout. And the second idea I had was have a system implemented in competitive. If you are searching for a six man team, you'll be placed against a six man team. And if it is a three man, it will be putting you into another game with three other people that are grouped together and, uh, and on and on with twos and also solo queues. Uh, I feel like this will reduce a lot of confusion and uh, and also uh, toxicity because if you are with a whole group of people on your team, say the six against another six, it is your team against theirs. And that, what more competitive is that? Now, if you want to talk about the threes against threes, I feel like even with that, you can still go to game chat or invite them into your party and you guys can talk it out. I feel like that would be a little bit more uh, balanced than having a person solo queue trying to jump into a uh, four man stack or a five man stack. Everybody knows each other in the five man stack and uh, this person solo queuing as is going to be like singled out. You know what I mean? So if it's actually a solo queue with the rest of solo queues, I feel like everybody in the solo queue doesn't really know each other, but they can come together in order to bring a win out in the end. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up right here. I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you slap that subscribe button. My name's Nebo. Till next time, guys. See ya.